What's up everybody? Today we're talking about five common mistakes that remote developers make. Now I spent an early chapter of my career, about a year and a half, remote contracting, and uh, these mistakes, I have made all of them personally. So this is coming from personal experience. There's many more mistakes people make, but here are five of the big ones that, uh, again, got me too. Before we get into all that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, and that's Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you design a beautiful online presence. And if you're trying to get these remote contractor freelancing jobs, Having a great online presence is paramount, and Squarespace is a great place to help you put your developer portfolio online, maybe have a developer blog to do some content marketing for yourself. Definitely check out Squarespace, get that online presence up and running. All right, mistake number one, take full advantage of this, right? Remote work is amazing, right? You have no commute. I know some of my jobs, I was commuting one hour each way. It frees up so much time. You get to make your own schedule. Uh, just take full advantage of that, right? A lot of people start off with the best intentions. They say, with all this extra time and flexibility, I'm gonna start going to the gym. I'm gonna start building my own side project that I've always wanted to build, right? You, you have all these, it's like New Year's resolutions, right? You have all these good ideas. But what happens over time is yeah, you may start off doing that, but a lot of that freed up time kind of evolves into, oh sweet, I can binge an extra season of Stranger Things on Netflix or whatever show you're watching. So just be careful not to slide into kind of the laziness and spending that extra time and opportunities on kind of the wrong things, right? Use that time to better yourself, do the side project, go to the gym. Uh, Cause again, this remote work is amazing. It allows you to do a lot of things. There's been many time periods where I wasn't taking advantage of it. I was being lazy and I regret that. So take full advantage of this. Mistake number two, that's poor scheduling. And just overall, like time management as a remote contractor, freelancer, developer is like one of the most, if not the most important skill. So uh, some tips on how to like not have a bad schedule. And the first one is to always try to schedule at least some window where your, your team is currently working, right? Because yes, remote work is great. You don't need to constantly be talking to each other on the team, but having a window, maybe it's an hour, maybe it's two, three hours, where you know, you're online with your team, uh, that can just up your productivity uh, a lot, whereas if like you're never online at the same time as your team. So one is scheduling it so it lines up with your coworkers a little bit, and then part two is scheduling it so it lines up with your family and friends and social life. So many times what I would do is I would just be chilling on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like I'll get my hours in later in the week and it would just never fail. I would always end up working the weekend, playing catch up, you know, and then friends and family are like, hey, do you want to go hang out or go do this? And I'm like, ah, I can't, I got to work. So I kind of like screwed myself by procrastinating uh, my work into you know, nights and weekends. And basically the social life really takes a hit when you do that. So it's good to work when your your social elements, friends, family is also working. That way you have free time when you need it. So to sum that up, having flexibility in your schedule is great, but having the discipline to schedule it also when your team is working for a little bit, and then also around your social life will make your, your work-life balance uh, great. Mistake number three for remote developers is under communicating. You know, you take for granted when you're in the same office working with a team, how easy it is just to keep each other updated on what you're working on. Well, in remote work, a lot of times that gets lost. You know, you may go off for an entire day working on your thing, your other teammate is working on that thing, and as long as that's aligned, like, great. But if you're only communicating very little, sometimes that can get misaligned and you lose a lot of time and productivity like working on the wrong things because you're not like constantly communicating. And I think in remote work, you should err on the side of over communicating rather than under communicating. And I just, I've seen it time and time again, proper communication can save so much time and headaches and problems uh, when you're a remote worker or just dealing with freelance contracts. Like I just stress, err on the side of over communicating. Don't under communicate and just assume they understood what you meant. Assumptions uh, cause a lot of problems. And like I said earlier, if you're looking to get into this remote lifestyle or you just want more freelance contracts, having a website and an online present is, is key, it's vital. In this video sponsor, Squarespace is a great way to build that online presence. And again, it's an all-in-one platform to help you get that website easily up and running. It's got all the SEO taken care of. You got analytics. You can get a beautiful website up and running really quickly. And like I said, when you're trying to get these contracts, these freelance gigs, having an online portfolio for people to go see your work is, is basically required. I mean, people are gonna wanna see what you've done before they can hire you. And again, Squarespace is a great way to get that online portfolio up and running.
So head to squarespace.com to start that free trial, get that website up and running. And when you're ready to actually launch it, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen for 10% off your first website or domain purchase. All right, back to the mistakes. Mistake number four is don't stop the momentum. The beautiful thing about remote work is that you set your own schedule, but it's up to you to get things done. So keeping that momentum going is key. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many productive days that I have lost to a lunch break right? I'll, I'll just be killing it in the morning. Like, oh yeah, let's take a lunch break. Maybe I'll lay down on the couch, watch an episode of TV. And then three hours later, I'm still on the couch and I've just lost all momentum, all motivation, all my willpower is like gone. I, I got lazy. So what I've learned, and it may sound like, you know, you're overworking, but that's not what I'm recommending. I'm just like, we all know what it feels like to get in that groove, right? We've all been coding, we've all been building or working on something and you're just in the groove. You're just crushing it. And what I've learned is to stay in that groove as long as possible, again, without overworking yourself, because as soon as you start that momentum, it's really hard to get that momentum going again. And this is a very important thing for remote developers, because again, you make your own schedule. It's up to you to get things done. And the faster you get things done, the better for you because then you can have time for your social life and other things, the side project. Um, but man, I've I've just crushed my own momentum so many times and then then fallen behind. Then I'm working weekends to catch back up. It's just like a it's like a cycle or a snowball that can kind of you know go out of control. So if you get that momentum going, do what you can to hold on to it. Don't stop the momentum. Uh, like I said, I've lost so many great mornings to a long lunch break. Happens all the time. Uh, keep that momentum. And then the last mistake, and again, we're keeping this list uh, short here. There's many more mistakes, but one thing I did is I didn't leave the house. It, and this sounds like, oh, of course I'm going to leave the house, but it's very easy to just get out of bed in your pajamas, roll over the computer or bring the laptop in bed with you, start working. And then like next thing you know, like the day's gone and you're like, okay, you know, I haven't left the house for two days, haven't showered in a day. It's very easy to fall into that. And, and keep in mind, I'm not talking like your first two, three months of freelancing, right? Because that's like the honeymoon phase, you know, you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Again, it's like a new year's resolution. But once you've been doing it for like a year and a half, bad habits really start to creep in and not leaving the house was one of them. So like I forced myself to leave the house, even if it's going to a coffee shop to work, just getting up, taking a shower, getting dressed. Uh, it, it just, it's like a mental thing because you start to really feel like a bum when you just haven't left the house for three days and you're still in your pajamas and like haven't showered. But I guarantee you, if you've been contracting long enough, you've done that. And then kind of along the same lines is like, it also gets a little lonely, like not leaving your apartment for two days. You have no human interaction, right? And, and you know, for some of us introverts, we may love that. But again, after a while, that really starts to wear on you. So get up, get dressed, go do activities, get out of the house, find a co-working space, coffee shop. Uh, it can get, it can mess with your head when you're all by yourself in your pajamas for like three straight days. So get up, get out of the house. 